Hey, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com, and today I'm going to show you how to build this rustic queen bed. This is a pretty simple project that most DIYers can take on, and I have plans available on my site to help you out. So, let's get started. To begin this project, I start over at the miter saw and rough cut all of my boards. Now we're over at the table saw, I'm ripping these boards down so that they will fit on my jointer. Now what I'm doing here is flattening out one face and one edge. So now that I have a face and an edge flat and true, I'm going to finish ripping this board down to its final width on the table saw. Now that all these boards are surfaced on two edges and have one flat face, it's time to glue it up. So one thing to keep in mind when you're working with solid wood is that you always want to make sure and remove the pith from your boards. Now the reason for this is whenever the pith is in the board, that section is very prone to cracking and movement. Here I'm ripping stock to rough width for the legs of the bed. Now back over at the joiner, I'm surfacing one face and one edge. So here I'm gluing up stock for the legs, and these will all be brought down to their final thickness and width once the glue is cured. So you are probably starting to notice the theme here. I am back over the table saw again. We are rough cutting material for the headboard now. And this is gonna go through the exact same process. I'm going to move over to the joiner to get that cleaned up surface and edge. And now we are ready to glue up this panel. This headboard is actually too wide to fit through my planer in its final dimension, so I had to glue it up into two different sections. Over at the planer, we're bringing all of the panels and boards down to their final thickness. So the footboard, the headboard, and all of the rails are being planed in this operation. So here I'm gluing up the headboard and I'm paying special attention to that glue seam to make sure it stays aligned while the glue cures. The next step in the process of finishing this headboard is to clean up the glue squeeze out. I personally like using these paint scrapers for that task. 
Now I'm going to take two passes to clean up the headboard to its final width. Here I'm using the Craig ACS to cut the headboards and footboards square. Now this is my favorite way by far in the shop to cut down large panels. Now I'm cutting the legs down to their final dimensions. Yes, I'm using the table saw to do this because it is quick and easy. Now over at the miter saw, I'm cutting the bed rails down to their final length. And here I'm also cutting down the legs to their final length. The design of this bed allows me to use pocket hole screws for the headboard and footboard construction. That's because they won't be seen once everything's assembled and the mattress is in place. And now it's time for everybody's favorite step, sanding. Since this bed is built from southern yellow pine, it has lots and lots of resin in it. My preferred sandpaper for this application is Clean Spore's 5 inch stair-rated discs. Now this is a great product because that stair-rated coating actually minimizes the clogging in the sandpaper. Alright, let's get on to some assembly. You see I put some plywood spacers on the workbench, and that allows me to set that center panel exactly where I want it. Okay, well now that we're done with the practice round, let's uh, do this for real on the headboard. Now you may be wondering why I didn't actually clamp the legs in place here, and the reason is that they're heavy enough that I really didn't need the clamps there to hold them in place. If you're wondering what length pocket hole screw I've been using for this project, it's the two and a half inch coarse thread screws. Here on the bed rail, I've installed a strip that the slats will be secured to. The mattress will sit on top of these slats. Here I'm setting the location for the bed rail hardware that we'll be using. These are surface mounted keyhole bed rail brackets and they're made by Rockler. Oh, and by the way, if you've never used those self-centering drill bits, they are where it's at. I have the bed rails resting on a couple of blocks to have it at the correct height, and then I'm just screwing the other end of the brackets into the headboard and footboard. Now here I'm marking and installing a center bed rail fastener. This little piece of hardware makes dropping in that center rail a breeze. All right, well that's gonna wrap us up for the day. I hope you enjoyed the project and hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe and don't forget about the plans I mentioned in the description below. Ah, oh, you're still there, awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe and until next time, have fun making something.